an ice-free Antarctica? The second to last segment of Ice Worlds takes us to Antarctica, the great ice island at the bottom of the world. Back in the Cretaceous, it wasn't covered in the ice it is today, and was instead quite lush. Antarctica was ice-free during the Cretaceous period from 145 to 66 million years ago. During this time period, there were forests at both poles. Fossils of trees and cold-blooded reptiles have allowed scientists to build up a picture of what the climate was like. Cold-blooded reptiles need the warmth of the sun to survive. Today, we see them basking in the sun to warm up during the day. At the poles, where the sun disappears during the winter months, it must have been warm enough for them to survive through the darkness. The mid-Cretaceous period was one of the warmest intervals of the past 140 million years, driven by atmospheric carbon dioxide levels of around 1,000 parts per million by volume. In the near absence of proximal geological records from south of the Antarctic Circle, it is disputed whether polar ice could exist under such environmental conditions. A 2020 Nature paper published by an enormous team of researchers led by Johann Klages used a sedimentary rock sequence within a rock core to show that a temperate lowland rainforest environment existed at a paleo latitude of about 82 degrees south during the Tyronean to Santonian ages, 92 to 83 million years ago. Klages said that the core sample is definitely the southernmost Cretaceous evidence ever recovered on the planet. The core Klages and his team extracted was taken from seafloor in West Antarctica, approximately 560 miles away from the South Pole. Inside the roughly 10-foot-long core, extracted in 2017, Klages and his team discovered a fossilized root network from the ancient temperate rainforest. The yellow strata of the core sample represent sandstone, and green is the intertwined root network of the ancient rainforest. Klages says that the heavily connected root network is pristinely preserved and is, more or less, indistinguishable from one you'd find if you were to drill into modern-day forest ground. On top of the pristine root network, the core sample also contains fossilized pollen and spores from the same period of time, which helps to clarify parameters of the Antarctic environment during the mid-Cretaceous even further. Klages says the mean temperature of this environment was probably on par with northern Italy and would have been an ideal location for insects and dinosaurs. Due to polar night, the phenomenon that sees the northernmost and southernmost regions of Earth plunged into darkness for months at a time thanks to the tilt of Earth's axis, keeping the sun below the horizon for more than 24 hours at a time, this ancient rainforest also somehow thrived for long stretches without the warmth and energy that the rainforests of today receive. As far as how a rainforest was able to survive in an area now frigid and covered in ice, that's all about our good old frenemy, CO2. According to the paper, for an environment like this to arise at this latitude, there must have been 1,120 to 1,680 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. For reference, there are just over 400 parts per million of CO2 in our current atmosphere. That number is obviously rising thanks to human-driven climate change. A climate model simulation generated by Klages and his team show that this environment would have only been possible with that exceptionally high amount of CO2 in the air, as well as a vegetated surface, however meaning that even if we took those super high CO2 levels and applied them to our modern world's environment, it still wouldn't heat up to those mid-Cretaceous temperatures thanks to our ice sheets and the fact that they reflect sunlight and hence heat from the Earth's surface. All of the more reason to keep our ever-endangered ice sheets intact for as long as possible. Scientists also used the shells of fossil organisms that lived in the ocean, called foraminiferans, to understand past climate. By analyzing the chemistry of their shells and knowing the age intervals when different species lived, they can get an estimate of ocean water temperature during that time. Dr. Brian Huber from the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History investigates the Cretaceous with a particular focus on deep sea sites around Antarctica. He explains, Foraminifera provide some of the best records because you've got both bottom-dwelling ones living in the sediments and recording bottom ocean temperatures and then you've got the planktonic ones that live in the top 50 meters of the ocean, recording atmospheric temperatures. 
When you couple those records through time and analyze the shells from different parts of the ocean all over the world, you get a really good idea of the evolution of climate. Huber elaborates that what they found in the Southern Ocean around Antarctica was hard to believe at first because it just seemed too warm. We found temperatures of 30 degrees C at 58 degrees south, close to the Antarctic Circle. These high temperatures occurred during the middle of the Cretaceous, known as the Cretaceous Hothouse, a hot greenhouse effect caused by increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But what happened in the Cretaceous to create a world where there were trees and dinosaurs roaming Antarctica, unlike the barren ice fields of today? Huber explains, what we know about the mid-Cretaceous in particular is that we had much faster rates of seafloor spreading and so much more volcanic sources of CO2. Huber and colleagues are still investigating whether the hothouse occurred as a result of a major amount of volcanism erupting CO2 and creating a greenhouse blanket that warmed the Earth, a perfect place for dinosaurs, hibernation, and occasionally cool temperatures during the shadows of winter. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.